Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm, I'm Chris Plow. I'm the director of the Duke Global Health Institute, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the commencement ceremony honoring our 2018 graduates of the Global Health major. Today we're honoring 58 young women and men who are earning degrees this weekend. Each of these students has done something truly remarkable. They have completed all the requirements of not one, but two majors at Duke. That's no small feat, and we salute the ambition and persistence you've shown to reach the culmination of this journey. I'd like to welcome the families of our graduates, many of whom have come a long way to commemorate this occasion. Thank you for being here, because today is a celebration of you as well. You've been there throughout this journey to provide your graduate with support, encouragement, and perhaps even a gentle nudge in the right direction from time to time. And if your graduate forgot to say thank you for those well-intentioned questions and reminders, let me say it now on their behalf. Thank you for all that you have done to help your graduates reach this goal. I also want to recognize the many members of the faculty and staff who are here today. Graduates, your professors and advisors have been with you every step of this journey. They've given you tough challenges and helped you develop the skills and tools to meet them. They've been there through the struggles and the successes, and they couldn't be prouder of the scholars you've become. Thank you to our faculty and staff for preparing an extraordinary group of graduates. And I want to make a very special thanks to the education staff who work tirelessly, tirelessly to support our students every day. Uh, Laura Bai, Sarah Martin, uh, Lisa McKean, Steve Bergman, and Elisa Helferty. You're appreciated more than you can imagine. We, we couldn't do this without you. Thank you. And so, graduates, it now comes to you. Your families and professors stand proudly beside you. It's you who did all the hard work. You wrote the papers, performed the research, you took the exams, completed your capstone project. And because you did all this, you can now call yourself a graduate of Duke University. Congratulations on everything that you've accomplished. But today, we're not just celebrating your achievement in earning your degree. We also look forward with eager anticipation to the bright futures that lie ahead of each of you. You chose to study global health because you have a desire to make a difference in the world, to create health equity and to seek social justice. We hope that we've given you the knowledge and the tools that you'll find useful in doing that. But at the same time, we recognize that there's no way in the course of your four years that we could teach you everything you'll need to know about the world and the health of its citizens. And so I hope we've given you something more. I hope we've taught you how to continue your education, not just as you launch your next adventure, but throughout your lives. And as the, at the commencement ceremony this morning for the Masters of Science in Global Health graduates, the commencement speaker, Shash Bandara, spoke with passion and eloquence about the empathy, including empathy for those we don't know and even fear, that's a core value of global health. And so I hope that we've helped you to find within yourselves the empathy to identify with the condition of others that you meet and the passion to pursue the change you want to see in the world, whether you go on to work directly in the field of global health or take your global health skills and values and apply them in other fields. I hope that we have given you the insight to ask good questions and the humility to know that the best path to answers may come from the people whom you seek to help. I hope we've shown you that seeking out and nurturing diversity in your community is not just a goal, but an essential ingredient of effective leadership. You now have the knowledge and the technical skills to make a difference in the lives of the communities that you work with. But more than that, you have your humanity. You've shown yourselves to be curious, passionate, and committed to social justice. And as you move on to your next adventures, I hope you'll stay true to these values and nurture them in others. And if you do, I promise the world will feel the impact of your work. Uh, but enough from me, we have a full program uh, this afternoon, including reflections from your professors and one of your peers on the journey you've all shared. Uh, and please also join us at a reception in the atrium immediately after the ceremony. Also, and all the pictures we'll be taking today will be available uh, online to download. And now to share more about this extraordinary class, 
please join me in welcoming the Director of our Undergraduate Studies for the Duke Global Health Institute, David Toole. I'm going to try what Chris did. Good afternoon. <laughs> we were training up there. <clears throat> so let me join Chris in welcoming all of you to this occasion, especially all the parents, family, and friends who've traveled from far and wide to be here this afternoon. But also, of course, you graduates, the 55 of you who are graduating with a major in global health, and the three of you who are Program 2 students. For those of you who don't know, Program 2 is a program at Duke where students can create their own major and three of them are joining us today because they anchored that, that um, self-designed major in global health. This is the fifth year of the global health major at Duke, and so the fifth time we have gathered on this Friday of graduation weekend. Five years is long enough to create traditions, and it has become a tradition that after the director of the institute welcomes everyone to the occasion, the director of undergraduate studies makes a few remarks. It has also become a tradition <laughs> to say a little bit more than Chris said on this point, but at this moment, the person standing here acknowledges publicly a handful of people without whom none of these graduates would have ever been able to complete a major in global health. The reality is that although tradition has given me the stage at this moment, the director of undergraduate studies has little to do with the success of these graduates. Others do the real work, and though I can't acknowledge everyone who helps make this program a success, I would like to ask a few people to stand and stay standing for a moment. Laura Bai, got to stand up. Lisa McKean, Elisa, and, and Steve, there's Steve in the back. Thank you. And so here I stand for the third time. I have to confess that although I've been teaching for 26 years, I still dread public speaking. And knowing every year for the past three years that at the end of the year I was going to have to stand here and have something to say to the graduates and their families and friends, even if only briefly, has always created anxiety. I've often found myself thinking of what I was, might say as early as September or October, hoping that a source of inspiration, a muse of some kind, would speak to me earlier rather than later. The past two years, Amuse, co Amuse cooperated, and I knew months before this day what I was going to say. But this year, the Muse remained silent in the fall, <laughs> and in January, and February, and March, and April, and had graduation come last week, I would have had nothing to say, and I would now sit down. A few minutes from now, you may conclude that such an outcome would have been preferable, <laughs> but in fact, a few days ago, an inspiration arrived, Amuse showed up in an administrative meeting of all places. And now I have something to say. And I want to begin by calling attention to the uniqueness of this group of graduates. The 55 graduates here this afternoon bring the total number of majors who graduated from the program to 198, which is remarkable when you consider that just 10 years ago, in the spring of 2008, you would have been unable to find a single student at any university or college in the country graduating with a major in global health. Global health. In 2008, these graduates were in sixth grade, on the front end of middle school, and they could not have been planning to major in global health because no such thing existed. And yet, here they are. Now we're one of 12 universities offering this major. Undergraduate education in global health is growing in popularity at universities around the country. But these graduates are joining a small and unique set. They will now make up almost a third of all the people who have graduated with a major in global health from Duke. And we are the only program in the country that requires students to pair global health with a co-equal major chosen from among any of the other 52 majors available at the university. We created this requirement to model the inherently interdisciplinary character of global health as a field. And then he turns uh, one too many pages and doesn't know what to say. Um, <clears throat> to give you just a glimpse of what this looks like, consider the 55 graduates sitting here this afternoon and who have co-majored co in 18 different disciplines. 
African and African American Studies, Biology, Biomedical Engineering, Chemistry, Cultural Anthropology, Economics, English, Evolutionary Anthropology, French, History, International Comparative Studies, Neuroscience, Environmental Science and Policy, Political Science, Psychology, Public Policy, Sociology, and Spanish. Honestly, <laughs> they've majored in global health and they've also done all of that. The question that looms for this diverse and adventurous group of students is, what now? A few days ago, I was sitting in a meeting with a group of colleagues discussing that question, but in a different context. We were talking about a new set of seminars we are designing for incoming fresh and freshmen that will carry the title, What Now? The question on the table was not the question you graduates are facing, what are you going to do now that you are graduating from Duke with a major in global health? Instead, it was the question you faced four years ago when you arrived on campus. What now? Now that you are one of 1,700 plus students matriculating at Duke instead of one of the more than 30,000 students who received a rejection letter. What now that your SAT and, SA and ACT scores and your high school grade point average no longer have any meaning, but your grade in organic, organic chemistry does? What's the right thing to say to a group of freshmen on the first day of their first semester as they look ahead the next four year, to the next four years and begin to plan their future. With this question under discussion, one of my colleagues quoted Peter Thiel, the co-founder of PayPal. It was just a single sentence, but I knew immediately upon hearing it that the inspiration had arrived, the muse had spoken, and now I would have something to say to all of you when the time arrived. And so when the meeting ended, I went straight to my computer, typed the quote and the name Peter Thiel into Google, and landed on a commencement address that Mr. Teal gave to students at Hamilton College in 2016. Here is a part of what he said. This is not what I set out to do when I began my career. When I was sitting where you are, I would have told you I wanted to be a lawyer. I didn't really know what lawyers do all day, but I knew that they had to go to law school and school was familiar. I had been competitively tracked from middle school to high school to college, and by going straight to law school, I knew I would be competing at the same kinds of tests I'd been taking since I was a kid, but I could tell everyone that I was now doing it for the sake of becoming a professional adult. I did well enough in law school to be hired by a big New York law firm. As I was leaving the law firm, I got an interview for a Supreme Court clerkship. This is the sort of top prize you can get as a lawyer. <clears throat> it was the absolute last stage of the competition, but I lost. I was totally devastated. It seemed like the end of the world. Later, I understood that if I hadn't lost that last competition, I never would have left the track laid down since middle school. I wouldn't have moved to California and co-founded PayPal. I wouldn't have done anything new. Looking back at my ambition to become a lawyer, it looks less like a plan for the future and more like an alibi for the present. It was a way to explain to anyone who would ask, to my parents, to my peers, and most of all to myself, that there was no, no need to worry. I was perfectly on track. It, took le it looked less like a plan for the future and more like an alibi for the present. Those are the words I heard in a meeting just a few days ago and I thought immediately of all of you, especially you parents and you graduates. Speaking from experience, I know that parents can often put undue pressure on their children, which causes children to create alibis instead of planning for the future. Even more, graduates who have been competitively tracked to institutions like Duke since middle school are all too good at putting undue pressures on themselves, which I take to be the moral of the story that Peter Thiel tells. When he was sitting where you are, he was not planning for his future, but creating an alibi for the present that would end up trapping him for the next 10 years. And so graduates, what now? Whenever you find yourself asking that, facing that question, which I expect will be often in the next few days, consider that there is some evidence that you are not sitting where Peter Thiel was because you majored in global health. When you were in middle school, no matter how good you were already becoming at taking tests, there was no track to jump on that could have led you here. And when you arrived on campus in 2014, there was no, not so much a track to jump on as a faint path to follow. At that point, only 10 students had majored in global health, and they were grandfathered in as seniors. When you arrived, no sophomores had yet declared global health as their major. Unlike Peter Thiel, when he was sitting where you are, you have already jumped off established tracks and tried something new. 
A few of you are Program 2 students, and the major you designed it didn't exist until you created it. The rest of you decided to major in global health at Duke when no one yet had graduated from the program as part of a four-year plan. And so, graduates, here's to your plans for the future and also to your alibis. You may still need them for your parents and your peers. <laughs> Just don't use them on yourself. And having imparted that advice, I would ask everyone to join me in congratulating the class of 2018.